Welcome to a new video and in this video I want to show you the unboxing and review of a smartphone that just costs 101 euro and this smartphone is the Huawei P Smart 2021 so let's get started Let's start first with the unboxing. So this is the packaging, as you can see here, Huawei logo, Huawei P Smart 2021. Uh, explore it on App Gallery, so that indicates there is no Google Play services. On the other side, Huawei P Smart 2021, and here as well, and above Huawei, and the bottom part, uh, the, the back side first, all the TÜV Rheinland certifications and so on. And the bottom one, I will not show you because they are are the EMI numbers. So, secured, sealed, as you can see here. And this really costs me 101 euros only. So, it is available, I think on eBay you can find some rarely used versions for uh, even 90. Uh, so, it's a very cheap device for a Huawei phone. It's uh, very cheap at least. And let's open up this seal. Sealing sticker is sticking very hard. And let's get started with what comes in the box. Uh, voila! The first thing is not the phone that you can see, but the information card about pedal search, phone clone and app gallery. And these are the three main um, main ways to get applications via pedal search or via phone clone where we can copy over your old Huawei phones data onto your new Huawei phone and of course the app gallery where you can get software and there's more explanation here even in different languages on the back as well as some links as well. So then we have the phone here itself okay for 101 euros what can you expect it is wrapped in a plastic back <laughs> And uh, what do we have else here in the box? So I can see the SIM eject tool here, of course. As you can see here, SIM eject needle. We have some warranty cards and quick start guides as well. There's no case inside. Probably not needed because the device is made out of plastic. I think for 101 euro you cannot expect anything better. And then the next thing that we have here is a charger. And this is a supercharger, that means it has 22.5 watts that it can charge with. And for 100 euros, that's not bad at all. Uh, it's better than 10 watts. And then we have, what do we have here? A USB-C cable for charging, USB-A to USB-C. And of course, we have also in this little compartment headphones. And as you can see, it's... It looks like very cheap kind of headphones, but you know, the look is not everything. The Sony Xperia 10 Mark II's headphones look also very cheap, but have wonderful sound. So maybe they are also good, but it has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. That means the phone probably has also a headphone jack. So now let's go to the main attraction, the phone itself. This is the Crush Green version that I have here. And I will remove the stickers, of course and put it somewhere and there's another sticker here remove this as well uh, crushed green is the color variant and as you can see here if i hold it into the light the camera gets problems focusing but this is the green that you can expect this is a plastic bag and probably fingerprint magnet but this is also the reason why you don't get a case because it's a plastic bag then what do we have on the front uh, smudges of course so let's get rid of them. So on the front we have, I think there's a protection foil. So screen protector is on there. Yes, there should be. It's pretty good. As you can see here, maybe uh, from the cutout of the front facing camera. So we have a 6.67 inch sized screen, IPS LCD screen, full HD plus screen. So normal, I think for the 100 euro range. We have a Kirin 710A chip, 
which is some kind of an emergency as you can see it's booting up it's an emergency kind of chip because of the us ban huawei didn't have the option to order some more chips from tsmc so they had to um, yeah quickly switch the supplier to the chinese one which is smic or smic i think it's called and uh, they only can produce 40 nanometers chips and uh, this is the reason why this one is now in 40 nanometers so what you can see here is like it's a very bright display i think it's getting like up to 450 nits in in terms of brightness can i get brighter what about the color shifting it's an icd you can see yeah there is a little bit of color shift if i go to left and right and also some shadowing going on here around the camera but not as as bad as on some earlier xiaomi phones i would say there's a little bit of uh, yeah a little bit of shadow here on the top and on the bottom as well visible but it's not nothing dramatic i would say so this is the device let's take a look around the device first of all the main front camera is an 8 megapixel shooter with an f 2.0 aperture i think yeah, nothing too big uh, full hd 30 frames per second is what it can record on the left side we have the sim um, the sim eject tool will allow me to open up the the sim what i can tell you already is it is a triple uh, triple sim um, slot so you have the possibility to put in two um, Let's get it out here. Ah, come on. You can get two SIMs, nano SIMs, and a micro SD card in there. So, as you can see here, triple SIM slot, very long, and uh, two nano SIMs and one micro SD card to extend the 128 gigabytes internal memory, which is, I think, for 101 euros, well, not bad at all. Then on the right side, we have a power button with integrated fingerprint reader. We have a volume rocker. And on the top, we only have a microphone. On the bottom, we have a mono speaker. We have USB type C, of course, 2.0 and a microphone and a headphone jack that allows us to listen to uh, music via the headphone jack, as you can see here. Then on the back, we have a four camera setup but uh, actually it's only a two camera setup with the main 48 megapixel lens with an aperture of f1.8 and autofocus uh, face detection autofocus 8 megapixel ultra wide angle with f2.4 and then we have two two megapixel sensors uh, one for macro and one for depth detection so basically useless so this is basically everything for the device and for the testing part. Of course, I will now uh, set up everything here and I will run through it, uh, test out the software and also the camera. So the next thing that we will test out is the camera. So let's try this out with the main camera lens on the back. First a vlogging setup. I'm moving slowly, have my little tripod attached here and uh, we want to see if this is working fine what i noticed is that the microphone the external microphone that i plugged in via the headphone jack that works on every other device basically with a little adapter to trs is not working on the huawei p smart 2021 at least it didn't work initially for me so i'm not sure if it's working right now if it's not working then you get the normal sound quality from the internal speakers of the p smart 2021 what do you think about the video quality of the PSmart 2021. I think it is okayish, but what you will notice pretty soon is that there's no image stabilization, no EIS, no AIS that Huawei is so famous for and uh, so yeah, recognized by. And now it's starting to rain, which is a little bit odd. Anyway, uh, this is the uh, normal wide camera and I can also switch in full HD 30 frames per second to the ultra wide camera if I want to and this is what I want to show you right now so let's see this here and now I'm going to the ultra wide camera and as you can see it is switched to the ultra wide camera and this is the ultra wide angle camera it is a fixed focus lens so you don't get autofocus on this one uh, so now front-facing video in the rain and who said that the P-Smart 2021 is not waterproof? 
uh, probably it isn't but there were some tests as well on the internet where someone put it underwater and it worked fine and I'm testing it right now as well so as you can see here uh, probably some water drops also on the screen they were all uh, on various different ports as well so far it is working fine the only thing that I can imagine is the audio quality is a bit shitty right now because I didn't plug in my headphone, uh, my microphone, because my microphone would uh, get uh, broken in this uh, wet uh, rain here right now. I made it unharmed through the rain. As you can see, it's still a bit wet. My coat or my jacket is also a bit wet. This is, by the way, the front-facing uh, camera, uh, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and. I just uh, tested out the microphone again. It's not working with the uh, Huawei P Smart 2021. I don't know why, because Huawei's camera software in general recognizes external sound cards and it's working fine with uh, the uh, Mate 30 Pro, the P30, and other series of uh, Huawei phones. So, yeah, might be an issue. By the way, no stabilization at all, no AIS, no EIS on both front and back cameras. So the trick with the Huawei P Smart 2021 is to tap and focus. So if I tap here now on my face, it should focus on my big nose now. And uh, this should work pretty uh, cool. Then you can, of course, uh, do vlogging, but you need a mirror just like I am using now my monitor as mirror because it's like a uh, yeah, good monitor and I can tap on my face and I know that it is focusing now on me instead of on the background. So then I think you can have a nice vlogging setup, but this is a workaround. Is it really necessary? I'm not so sure. Here are the pictures that you can get with the P-Smart 2021 and I have to say I was a little bit surprised about the quality of a 100 euro or 101 euro smartphone so I was not expecting too much but I'm quite surprised by the dynamic range that you can get out of the main camera the 48 megapixel main camera and you can see that at 100% it is still good it is not really bad so it is still really usable usable and uh, i think this is uh, quite uh, cool as you can see here and uh, yeah the quality is good the dynamic range is good of course it cannot compete with flagship devices but you can see here dynamic range is okayish and you can see sharpness is okayish i can read here the sign at the uh, train station here without any or tram station without any issues and here again no problem at all and uh, yeah you saw my video when it comes to the rain here yeah, shot in the rain um, also no problem night mode is another completely different kind of category and as you can see here this is the nighttime picture it is not very good so if it gets too dark then it's not very good as you can see here it is brightening up the scene but you can see all the noise creeping in barely usable so if you have the chance use the flash or try to get some uh, kind of light otherwise the night mode no matter which camera this is the main camera right now doesn't really work a difference now between the normal camera that you can see here right now you can see a little dust here so the details are clearly there the 48 megapixel camera is working fine and now the ultra wide angle camera as you can see here the ultra wide angle is slightly a little bit softer overall doesn't have a clear focus point because it's a fixed focus lens and you can see smudges out in this yeah shot in my room already so the daylight that is coming in from the window is not enough for it to provide a nice and great shot and uh, you can see also the edges getting uh, pretty soft already here as well and you can see some kind of waves in the picture itself which is like a bit weird so the ultra wide angle is typical what you can expect from a 100 euro smartphone probably up to the 300 euro category I saw um, ultra wide angle cameras that have yeah basically the same quality when it comes to the main camera you can get nice little bokeh if you get closer to an object and focus on it as you can see here 
uh, there you can see details pretty nicely here you can see also that the sensor is uh, with one over two inch quite big so some things are out of focus slightly out of focus and only this part is in focus where i focused on very nice details indeed it is possible without any issues this is the macro cam you can get very close to this little flower and uh, yeah, if i zoom in you can see here's a two megapixel macro cam there's nothing much to see and uh, why i'm showing this you can see that the colors are quite washed out if you compare it to this shot because this shot is with the main camera and what i want to say this is why i think the macro shot or the macro camera is useless if i zoom in here you can see <laughs> get a better shot already better colors and also a little bit more detail just compare this shot with this zoomed in shot i think this one is a lot better and if i go now to the 40 full 48 megapixel photo you can see it takes a while for my computer even to load and i zoom in now you can see even more detail in the shot and i think this is a true macro cam so if you want a true macro cam just go in high res mode shoot 48 megapixel try to be as steady as possible and you can see the little dust or whatever it is on this little uh, leaf of the little flower pretty cool 48 megapixel works good you need a lot of light of course otherwise this pixel binning and then light optimizations is not working quite as well as it should but if you want to have details shot just don't use the macro cam use the 48 megapixel then another shot directly into the sun you can see the sun here at the top and uh, yeah dynamic range huawei is always the king in dynamic range it's not the best maybe but even with this uh, sensor they are able to pull it off so it looks pretty nice here selfie shot selfies now yeah uh, let's say it's working you can see yourself but it's not really sharp as you can see here indoor pictures and even the background is not sure i don't know what the selfie cam should be it is not very sharp in video mode i think it's a quite a bit better and usable but here in uh, photo modes no no uh, without autofocus you have to find the right point and i never did in my tests this is the bokeh mode or the aperture mode where you can have like fake aperture and it works quite good for objects i think you can see that it has problems with focusing somehow and uh, you can see here my hand the cutout of the hand is not perfect but in general yeah you can play around with this uh, as well then here another shot to highlight the high dynamic range you can see it's a little bit darker here now uh, and uh, yeah the sun is uh, now out again and you can see here another shot let's take a look at the detail level you can see yeah it is okay for 48 megapixel for 100 euros it is okay you can read stuff and i think the the edges on the main sensor are also uh, pretty nice and here another shot uh, of course there was a puddle i had to photograph it and as you can see it was uh, yeah focusing here on the leaves of the re reflection then another shot of course it's pretty nice to shoot flowers when there's a little bit of a water drop still going on you can see it is maybe not as detailed as I, if i wanted to have it's now the not the 48 megapixel just the normal one which i think is downscaling to 12 megapixels if i'm not completely mistaken you can get nice shots out of the camera in uh, daylight condition and another hdr shot when i was seeing it on a viewfinder basically everything besides the sky was a little bit dark but after taking the shot and taking a look at the image itself you can see it managed to get quite a good shot out of here and then another shot also again you can see the little droplets here you can see the little hairs it's not perfectly sharp yet but i think for the 100 euro camera you don't want to zoom in and crop in as much it's okayish and another shot here with uh, the super wide angle camera to show you that the super wide angle has also a good dynamic range you can see the sky is exposed correctly and the rest is exposed correctly here in the middle it is already a little bit soft but if you go to the sides it's even worse you can see this is almost like an oil painting here on the side and here as well the, the leaves is like yeah uh, cannot distinguish between the different leaves of this uh, bush and another shot here to show you uh, that you can get sharp shots at least i wanted to get this sharp well, i'm not sure if i got it sharp or the background a little bit sharp um 
So the focus is sometimes hit or miss, I found out, and you saw it in the video as well that it never managed to uh, really focus on my face when using the main camera. So this might be an issue. It is not the vlogger's dream, at least not with the main camera on the back, which usually is the better camera. Uh, so maybe stick to the front-facing camera if you want to vlog and yeah, external microphone you can sadly forget. Uh, this is all about the pictures of the Huawei P Smart 2021. Let's test the mono speaker by playing some copyright free music from Huawei Video. Uh, it's interesting. As a YouTube alternative, you have the option to use Huawei Video. And this is 50%. And you can see it's clearly a mono speaker. And I can go even higher. It's pretty loud, I would say. So it is vibrating a little bit here where the uh, speaker is, but uh, anyway, I think it gets pretty loud. There's no bass at all, almost. So the lows are mm, not really present. The mids and the highs are good, I would say. So pretty average speaker for a 101 euro phone, I would say. When it comes to the user interface, you can get the yeah, usual Emotion UI. In this case, this is Emotion UI in the version 10.1.1. So there's no update for 11, as I don't think this phone is powerful enough for the 11 update. Otherwise, I can check for the update, but I think this is the latest uh, version. And if I'm not completely mistaken, it got the February 2021 and uh, it got the March 2021 uh, security updates. We are now in May, end of May, actually. So uh, yeah. I hope it will get some other security updates as well. Otherwise, it's a usual Emotion UI with Huawei ID. You have uh, all your connection and uh, options here, home screen and wallpaper, where you can see that you can have a magazine for the uh, unlock screen here. As you can see it can have a different wallpaper every time if you want to. There is uh, face recognition, so I can slide, slide up this. I, I hate this slide up, but it's just like, um, standard here by default but of course you can go and change this display settings as you can see here uh, you can get pretty bright in terms of display here i think it's about 500 nits or 450 nits something like this you have eye comfort mode ebook mode which has everything like less shiny for reading stuff and of course you have a dark mode which looks like this you can see the nice fluid animation even with emotion ui 10.1 and you have the screen resolution. It is set to smart resolution. Otherwise you can set it also to 720p if you want to preserve some battery. Battery is also a good, um, is also a good thing because in this device we get a 5,000 milliampere hours battery, which gets, gives you run times over 10 hours of screen on time, which is just phenomenal. Uh, it could be even better if you would have an OLED screen here, but with the LCD screen, of course, the power consumption is a bit, uh, as you can see here, not, nothing much to report, but it is a bit, um, it's good. It is not bad. You can get through the day definitely. And if you, even if you have a user and uh, for a second day, you can get as well if you use it more moderately. Otherwise, uh, software will be installed via the Huawei App Gallery. I already went in there. You get some uh, nice applications in here. It is growing each day. If you don't find a nice application, you can use here the Paddle Search, which allows you to uh, search and install applications. Just like, for example, if you, I don't know, if some people try to install WhatsApp or something like this. Uh, so... WhatsApp or something like this, you can search for, you can say apps, and uh, then it will give you a download link for WhatsApp if you want to, as you can see here, install from the official website. So this is working. Uh, what about Google Maps? So if you want to have a, a map app from Google, uh, Google Maps, for example, there should be an application as well from APK Pure. You click install. It will download Google Maps. You click allow here, say download the file. It's about 50 
uh, megabytes that it will download here in a few seconds and then you can install it but you you can also run it but of course as google services are missing you don't have the option to log in the same goes for youtube so what i use here is usually youtube advanced or the website that also works nicely i have to allow pedal search to uh, install applications and now i can just simply install this application hit install here and it's installing <coughs> And a few seconds later, I have Google Maps installed. Of course, you have also the option not to use Google Maps, but Petal Maps, which is also available from the Huawei uh, app gallery. So let's search for Petal Maps here. You can see that the overall fluidity and speed of the device is okay-ish uh, for things that I do. You can see animation. Sometimes there's a hiccup, especially now, as you can see. When I'm installing something, as soon as it's installing something in the background, there are some hiccups, especially also with the Today page loading all the steps and other things that it wants to load and use. It can sometimes have a hiccup. And this goes also for the browser. Let's uh, agree here to everything. I resetted everything for this video. And uh, yeah, you can in the browser, of course, go to YouTube as well and take a look at YouTube videos. They work uh, fine. It is not the best, best uh, experience, I have to say, but uh, you have options like going forward, skip forward, and so on, and you can log in. You have the basic option and it's working fine. It uh, might be not uh, the, the best, so you don't have like a mini player or something like this uh, going on. Um, sometimes it hangs, as you can see here, and for, for the multitasking, I want to go to multitasking, I just played something. It can be a little bit fiddly. Uh, Petal Maps is there. Petal Maps works fine on Huawei devices. Let's skip this intro. Say yes, agree, and agree only when I use. Okay. And yeah, this is uh, Petal Maps. And you can see that I'm in Cologne right now. Uh, and there are some features. Top features you can't miss, what's new. It will explain the new top features of the app itself. But you saw other videos that I did already. So in general, I uh, like the UI. It is a bit stuttery here and there, but for 100 euro, what can you expect? Uh, not the fluid, most fluid operating system and multitasking. It might be stuttery a little bit here and there. Uh, but you can see mostly it's running fine. Reloads sometimes because only four gigabytes of RAM. But in general, I think it is adequate for the price range. So this is my little quick review of the Huawei P Smart 2021. Do you have a smartphone that's only 101 euros um, expensive or did you buy a smartphone for 100 euros what do you expect in this price range do you think that the p smart fits this price range or should it go a little bit lower or upper because you can get it now new from huawei i think for 150 160 or even 170 euros but if you take a look at ebay you get even like some uh, as good as new for 90 euros and this one completely new for 101 euro as i said and uh, yeah what do you think about the huawei p smart 2021 just write it down in the comment section that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye